the South the Sassol South African Rally Championship. The Total Rally of South Africa once again kicked off with much fanfare at the Swatkops race circuit west of Pretoria. The event also doubled up as the second round of the FIA African Rally Championship, a series won for the past three years by South African drivers. The event is the longest on the local calendar, stretching over three days and 300 kilometers of special stage tests. After starting at Swartkops, it moved to Mpumalanga, passing through Bronkos Sprite, Ermelo, and finally Buckglass. Richard, we haven't seen you on a national rally for quite a while. Tell us what you're doing here. Um, Vito, who navigates for Skulk, unfortunately has a business commitment overseas and can only be back tomorrow. So literally five, six days ago, Skulk phoned and said, help, uh, wouldn't I like to come and do the total rally? Um, it was a bit of a decision because I haven't done a, a major rally for quite a while, sort of four years ago with Hannes, we won the Tara and the Nissan Bucky. And I think it was three years or four years ago, he and I entered an A7 Nissan and finished third overall on the same event. And tell us, you're looking forward to it? Yes, yeah, it'll be something different in a, an N4 car, a four-wheel drive Subaru. It's going to be a very interesting event for us, I think. You've got two new babies in your life. Uh, tell us about the human one first. Yeah, it's my little daughter, Nina. She was born on the 7th of January. Uh, she's very cute, as you can see. Is she going to make you slower? No, no, she's definitely making me quicker. <laughs> and tell us about your new baby, the new polo. How does it, how's it feel? Yeah, oh, look, for the first time out, uh, it went pretty well. There's a, a few settings I would like to change. It's, well, we've got a bit of an understeer, but I mean, it was a good start. Um, everything in the car seems fine. I'm very happy. Is everything new or is there some components that have been carried over? Uh, no, everything is brand new. Um, it's based on the Super 1600 from Germany. Um, We've got the old, the, the same engine as we had in the previous car and the same type of gearbox. But other than that, it, it's really based on the Super 1600 from Germany. Johnny Gemmel and Greg Godridge were first on the road thanks to their status as the most recent Africa Championship winners, a feat they managed in 2002. After being forced to drive his older Subaru in the previous event due to late delivery of parts following an accident on round one, Gemmel was back in his newer spec N4 L&J Plant Impreza. The pair endured a torrid 2003 season, retiring in almost every round. They had led last year's total going into the final day, but before the day's first stage, the car's engine failed. The Volkswagen squad had been burning the midnight oil to improve the competitiveness of its newly built Class A8 BP Golfs. The team built two new cars during the off-season, but these lacked in pace compared to the opposition. Former champions Gianni Habit and Douglas Judd endured mixed fortunes in the opening two events of the year, recording second and fifth place finishes. Following a myriad of problems in the last event, including a wheel breaking off, a broken drive shaft and a misfire, the pair was hoping for a clean run to challenge for honours. Let's go into the cockpit and listen out for the wrong call from Judd. That's three pass left. The open half and right. Left. Oh, left side. Serge Damso and Robert Paisley enjoyed a perfect start to the season with two wins out of two in their Castrol Toyota Runex in defense of their title. The new Runex is a huge improvement over last season's championship winning car, allowing the pair to dominate the opening events. There was consternation in the burger camp former African rally champ was due to start second on the road, but an incorrect start time saw him line up fourth after being given the same time as Damso. Clark of the course, Dieter Koch, had to come to the rescue to make some sense of the situation, all watched by the top brass of Motorsport South Africa. Without much to gain by pushing too hard, Berger took things easy through the stage in his Class N4 Bridgestone Subaru South Africa Impreza, ending with eighth quickest time. Enzo Kuhn and Guy Hodgson endured a torrid start to the season, failing to finish the first two rallies in their Class A8 BP Volkswagen Golf. They would make a good start to the total, setting equal fastest stage time with teammates Habich and Judd.
Etienne Lawrence and Andre Vermeulen were expected to put in a good performance on this, their sponsors' event. Lawrence had worked hard to make his Class A8 team total Toyota Runix competitive between events and was confident that it would perform to expectations. He pushed quite hard to finish fourth fastest. The long-awaited Class A7 BP Volkswagen Polo eventually made its debut in the hands of Hergen Fecken and Dave Levkovitz. The car had been in the build process for the best part of a year, but the wait appeared to have been worth it. The early prognosis was positive, although there is still much fine-tuning to be done. They were seventh fastest on the stage. J.P. Damso and Corpus Frey were determined not to repeat their embarrassing mistake of last year when they stuffed their team total Toyota Corolla into the Swatkop's wall on the very first stage. They managed it successfully and set the third fastest stage time, despite being ultra-cautious at the infamous corner. After retiring the first stage last time out, Califan Marva and Gideon Trollope were confident of a good run in their N4 Mobile Subaru Impreza. Nicholas Ryan and Brian Carryhill finished in the top 10 in the Cape Rally and wanted more of the same in their N4 Bosal Subaru Impreza. Cliff Blackman and Johan Klaassen were looking for a finish in the top car Bosch BMW after two non-scores. However, the car spewed most of its engine oil out onto the circuit, almost spelling the end of their rally. Fisser de Plessis and Tilo van Westenhagen also finished in the top 10 in the last event and were determined to repeat the performance in their Metmeister outsurance. All the N4 cars are privateers, and you can't really expect a privateer to run against the factory budget. So, you know, in that sense, I think they're fairly limited. And uh, they've done what they could up to now. Skaga's got the latest group in N4 car in the world, and uh, he came close at times, but uh, maybe he's got a chance here because it's some fast to lose stuff. But uh, I would still say that the, the, the factory team should be favourite. And certainly Toyota, I mean, they've got everything right, their cars are working, and it's a case of playing catch-up for the rest of them. Mm. This event, uh, it's the doubles as a round of the FI Rally Championship, what can ex competitors expect from the conditions? Well, there's always been a fairly rough event. This. It's been long and there's been a high attrition rate. As far as the rest of Africa is concerned, you know, the Africa Championship has been a non-event for many, many years, really because there's just no real competition coming out of Africa. And I think this event, we only have two or three and of uh, fairly low quality entries, so I don't expect any of them to be around the front of the, of the field anyway. But uh, I think high attrition rate, which at the start of the event should really favor Toyota as well, because it looks like they've got reliability, cars working, Volkswagen's been up and down. And they're looking for reliability first thing and speed secondly. So uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a job for the, the two drivers to keep up with the Toyota. Hergen Fecken's in a new polo. He seems quite confident. Obviously, he's in Class A7, one class down, but uh, he thinks with a bit of work he can challenge a Class A8 cars. Do you think that's possible? That car's been a long time coming, and uh, everybody's expected a lot of it. And really, I think with what they have available for the car, it should be a front runner. Obviously, they've been limited with tire sizes and things like that. But hopefully he's going to be right up there. And then hopefully Etienne is also going to come to the front now. His first rally was not really that, didn't do that well, but the second one he was up on the pace. And it'll be nice to have him in the mix again. A strong 48 car entry started the rally with only one car falling out in the first two stages. The Sassel Volkswagen City Golf of Gugu Zula and Dave McGregor retired with engine failure in stage one. The overnight position saw Kuhn leading the event by three seconds from teammate Habich. Lawrence was a further four seconds back, followed a second later by J.P. Damso, who, in turn, was four seconds ahead of his father, Serge. Fekin's Polo slotted into sixth ahead of the Subaru of Gemmel and Blackman's BMW, which continued without any engine damage, thanks to its Castrol lubricant. The first day's stages were largely irrelevant, though, as the rally proper started with the gravel roads near Bronkhorst Spreit and Witbank. There was still a long way to go in the event, and everyone was expected to tread rather cautiously until the final day. Gemmel was still first on the road, and, as it showed the previous year, he was expected to make his move as the event moved onto gravel. He duly proved to be fastest on stages three and four, albeit by just one and three seconds, respectively. 
Berger was second on the road, the position he should have been in at Swatkops. With two solid results behind him so far this season, he held a healthy lead in the production car championship. One of his great class rivals, Mitsubishi driver Fernando Rueda, was forced to sit out the event due to illness, making both Berger and Gemmel's task a little easier. The former was third fastest on stage three, but lost 30 seconds on the next test. As usual, Habich was driving as hard as he could, as the spectacular jump demonstrates. The golf was still down on traction, but nevertheless, he managed equal fourth fastest on stage three and equal second fastest on stage four. Reading champions Damso and Paisley took no chances at Swatkops to lie fifth overnight, but came out firing on the gravel, setting second fastest stage time on both opening stages. Damso was chasing win number 65 on this event, which would put him just one behind equaling Saro van der Merwe's record. Van der Merwe won 71 rallies in his career, but five of them were recorded abroad. The Toyota driver had looked completely at ease in the first two events, the Iranix proving to be the class of the field. The team had built a completely new car for the season, ironing out all the bugs the first-generation car suffered from last year. Keen and Hodgson suffered ill luck in 2003, and that misfortune seemed to have followed them into this season. They overheated the Golf's engine in the first event when a clamp cut through a hose, while on the last event, the rear wheel broke off after hitting a yump. Leading overnight, they could only manage sixth and fourth fastest times on the opening two tests of the day. Lawrence struggled with his run-ex in the first two events, but was confident of an improved performance. Due to its FIA status, pace notes were used on this event. We went on board with Fekin to hear what it was all about. Long medium left, right into turn medium right. To turn medium right, into slow left. Slow left opens. 1.3 kilometers now. A good scrap was expected between Damso Jr. and Fekin, and it was proving to be just that, with the former just one second faster over the two gravel stages combined. Blackman and Clarsen's event was about to come to an end. You can hear them struggling to get drive just as the differential is about to break, leaving them with three retirements in three events. Duplessis Subaru also suffered diff problems in the previous two events, so a technician was flown out from abroad to help solve the problem, but to no avail, he soldiered on. Karth has been impressive so far during the year, showing superb commitment. He was hard on it as he passed the stricken BMW. Still prevalent, Duplessis took advice and simply concentrated on his driving in an effort to score a good finish. Reinecke's car was sporting some bodywork alterations on the right front. He would retire with electrical problems in stage six. And Ben was in early trouble. The Lancer's turbo wastegate was jammed open, causing the engine to lose most of its power. They lost chunks of time and had to take lateness in their efforts to cure the problem. Two golfs were at the top of the leaderboard, but it was exceptionally close, with just 16 seconds separating the top five. Berger's poor stage four had dropped him down the leaderboard, while Damso Jr. had fended Fekin off superbly. 